Okay, welcome to Space War Part 8. Uh, in this part, we're going to learn how to make multiple enemies and multiple allies. Um, fortunately, using Python is very, very uh, easy, straightforward overall. Uh, so let's see what we have so far. We've got a player, and his job is to oops, shoot the enemy. Very weird. We got some weird things going on there, but deal with that later. Um, let's deal with some other important things. And I can shoot my own guy, which is not good. So I want to shoot the red ones. I get 100 points. And I want to not shoot the blue ones because those are my allies. And later they could turn into weapons depots or, you know, uh, you know, fuel depots. There's lots of things we could do with that once we've got our basic game working. Um, so let's see if we can get some more uh, enemies and uh, more allies on the screen. And to do that, basically what we're going to do is we're going to be using some lists. And uh, so here's how it's going to go. Um, if I can find cool, i just do it for my head. OK, so what we're going to do is, OK, so we're going to create our sprites. Uh, I'm going to comment out the enemy sprites. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a for loop for it doesn't matter, I in range. Um, let's say we make six enemies. Okay. So I'm going to create an empty list. So enemies equals empty list. So what I'm going to do for each iteration through the loop, I'm going to go enemies. How do we add things to a loop or to a list? Append. What we're going to do is we're going to append this. Okay, enemy, circle, red. And that's going to create six enemies on our screen. Let's try it. Okay, enemy.move. Enemy is not defined. Okay, very interesting. So now enemy is not defined because I commented that out. So I've got enemies. So I've got to go down to here. I'm going to let's comment that out for now. So what I do is for enemy in enemies. So I've created six enemies here. So for each of them, I'm going to move it. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six enemies. Um, they all start at the same spot, uh, but they're moving in different directions because that was randomized. Now you notice they're moving very slowly, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so let's do the same thing with allies. So you notice all the enemies started at minus 100. Let's get our allies to start at 100. And again, this we can comment out. So again, we're just going to basically copy the same formula. We're going to create an empty list for our allies. And allies. Append. I'm just going to copy. Where is that ally? And let's run it. OK, same problem. Ally is not defined. So down here, I've got to do for, oops, for, for ally and allies. Ally.move. So you see, if you keep your list names consistent and all that sort of thing, it makes your code very, very easy to read. So that was interesting. What happened there? Can okay, notice the, now the collisions are not working. Okay, I can tell you what's happening. Uh, actually, it would work for one of them, but it's not working for all of them. Um, so what's going on? Same thing is now that we've created this loop. 
we need to put all this collision stuff inside of these loops. So, so this is for the enemy. So for enemy, so for each enemy, I need to, I need to, do, I need to do that now. Okay, I need to make sure the indentation is correct. So for every enemy, check for a collision. Okay. For every enemy, check for a collision with the. That's with the player, and that is with the enemy. Oops. Yeah. So. so every enemy, every time through, all six of them, check is there a collision with the player, and is there a collision with the missile. Same thing for the ally. Every time through, because we need to check it for all of the allies. Run that. Okay. okay, so that's working. Okay, so the game's running very, very slowly. We'll fix that in a minute. Okay, so you can see now the collisions are working. And I didn't set up collisions for the allies because we don't want to. So you can see how easy that was. It took us about a minute, you know, a couple minutes. Uh, so what we did is we created a list of enemies. We used the append method to add the enemies at the same spot, um, just like we kind of did before. And then in our main game loop, we need to loop through each enemy and do the. So you and basically what's nice is we're using the same code because um, we use enemy and enemies. It's just looping through and we just use the same code, it makes life really, really easy. Now you've noticed the screen's gotten really slow. Um, so what we're gonna do, there's a couple things. The reason is that it's just trying to draw too much uh, at, at the same time, essentially. So what we're gonna do is, this brings us back to this tracer method. Tracer tells you how many, uh, how often you wanna update the screen. So one thing I could do is I could say, every three frames, for example, I want to update. So this should run our program a little faster. So you can see that's working. Okay. But what happens is the more objects we add, um, it gets really, it gets really hard to kind of balance that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set tracer to zero. Okay. And what that does, well you'll see. Okay. So it's not updating the screen at all, okay? Or hardly at all, I should say. So what we need to do inside of our main loop is another kind of turtle method. And it's gonna be turtle.update. Okay. So that will update the screen. So once we do all these things, so what's, what's been going on is, let's say we're halfway through this loop, the screen updates. And we're halfway through this late, the screen updates. So that slows the program down. So what this does is it stops the updating until we get to here. So we do all this calculating. I could have put it at the end, doesn't matter. It comes all the way back and updates. So let's run that. Oops. Now you can see how fast it is. Ooh. So what we might want to do with this, because it's, it's a bit fast to play, um, is we can import time and then add a little delay. So we may not lead this later, but let's say time dot sleep, say zero point zero one hundredth of a second. Let's see if that helps us. That's a little bit more manageable. Um, just kind of have to play around with it a little bit. There's 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 other ways to do this, but um, that would make it a little bit more irrational, I guess. But okay, that's that's a bearable speed. Okay. And again, like if you're making levels in the game, you could maybe speed it up 
after each level. So level one's a certain delay, level two's a certain delay. Um, if we have time, maybe we'll do that in a future video, but for now we don't really, okay? So we have learned uh, during this lesson very important stuff. Um, we have taken our sprites and we put them into a list and we can add as many as we wanted here uh, within reason. And then we've put inside of our main game loop, we've put a loop, so for each enemy, and again, because we've used this name, which we've been using all along, the code, we just copy it, indent it, and it's very, very simple to update our game like that. Okay, that's it.